The 2018 Tomb Raider movie got us thinking about Lara Croft and what the character has meant to audiences over the years. The character's history represents a complicated mix of over-sexualization and empowerment that reveals a lot about our relationship to strong female heroines. I woke up this morning and I just hated everything. Thanks to her popularity, Lara opened the door for more female video game characters and more female action protagonists on screen. But the original Lara Croft rose to fame in part thanks to being objectified for her exaggerated feminine appearance. Gaming and addiction researcher Dr. Mark Griffiths noted that when talking about Lara, most players mentioned her breasts. Don't you think you've seen enough? And when the first movie, Lara Croft Tomb Raider, came out starring Angelina Jolie, producers tried to replicate the allure she held for male gamers. Are you going to shoot me, Alex? So from the very beginning, Lara Croft's function was to be a sex symbol, marketed primarily to young men. But along the way, she kind of became a female trailblazer too, almost by accident. So this brings us to our main question. Is Lara Croft just a male fantasy, or is she a feminist hero? And is it possible to be both? Well, that is a secret. If I told you, I'd have to kill you. Looking back on Lara Croft Tomb Raider, you could use this movie as a Hollywood crash course on how to craft the perfect male fantasy. A heroine who's extra sexy and strong, but somehow absolutely non-threatening. Before we go on, be sure to hit subscribe and click the bell to get notifications on all of our new videos. The first step is making your sexy heroine be all man inside. From the opening scene of Lara Croft Tomb Raider, it's like the film is saying, Lara will turn your preconceived notions about women upside down. <laughs> Which means that what we're about to see is a man's personality in a woman's form. She wears no makeup, plain clothes, and a tight braid. She's brusque, a woman of few words. Time to save the universe again then, is it? Absolutely. Lara is strong, assertive, inquisitive, and brave, all very traditionally male qualities. So Lara's tomboyish ways are a fantasy for male viewers and players. She has the body and looks of a woman they desire, but the interests and behavior of their best male friend. Thank you, boys. Over and out. Sadly, the message to any female viewer, though, is to be a badass, be more like a man. 18 years later, Daenerys Targaryen is both badass and very feminine, but Lara was sort of defeminized so that she'd be more desirable. And that didn't make her a very empowering role model for women. And a lady should be modest. Yes, a lady should be modest. The second thing that's really revealing is the story's point of view. If Lara were a heroine we're supposed to be identifying with, we would be seeing things from her point of view. Sometimes we do, but Lara's opening fight with a robot is not filmed with her point of view in mind. The robot pounces on top of her while she's on her back and pushes down on her. The shot choreography places Lara in an overtly sexualized position, and we see the robot's point of view, watching her fight back, rather than just living her experience of the fight. Then, in this scene again, it's just blatantly obvious that we're meant to be seeing Lara in a sexualized way. Compare that to this shower scene from the same film. This scene puts you in the experience. It makes you think about how it feels to have the water hitting your skin. Whereas Lara's scene is shot to look like what you would imagine if you were fantasizing about Lara Croft taking a shower. It has nothing to do with her experience and everything to do with how she looks. Always a pleasure. For a cold shower. The Tomb Raider video games are third person, so from the start, the experience has been about always seeing Lara, and the movie maintains this appeal with its point of view. Players have complete control over video game Lara because that's the nature of a video game. She's a badass with a built-in lack of agency, so video game Lara can be as accomplished and awesome as possible and still not be intimidating. 
which added to her original sex appeal. But in a movie, this level of control isn't really possible. So in Lara Croft Tomb Raider, the filmmakers found other ways to make viewers feel they had power over Lara. To understand how the movie takes power away from Lara, let's look at her backstory, or lack thereof. She has no mother and identifies strongly with her father, who was an explorer slash archaeologist. She lives in a huge mansion with a hacker who seems to be like a brother to her. Bryce. Don't stop. And a butler named Hillary. Anything you need? No, thank you, Hillary. Don't you stay up too late. This setup makes Lara feel like a child in an adult's body. Her drives and priorities are basically those of a kid. Adventuring. But you know I can't resist a bit of fun. And pleasing her parent. I miss you, Daddy. The scene that sets her adventure in motion wouldn't be out of place at the start of Harry Potter. She wakes up because of a mysterious ticking sound and walks around in her PJs looking for the source of the sound. So because Lara has the story and motivations of a kid, I still have you, Daddy. She elicits a kind of protectiveness in male viewers. And however strong she is, the movie is on some level making her a damsel in distress to recreate that protective feeling in viewers. And critics have noted that video game Lara was especially attractive to players in part because of her sparse backstory, so viewers can imagine her inner life as whatever they prefer. Lara also has no romantic storyline, at least not at first. She doesn't seem interested in any man besides her dad. Your father said you will never give up. My father. You knew my father. Her dormant sexual agency makes Lara more approachable and less threatening. Her unawakened sexuality is hinted at in the symbolism of her adventures. Egypt again. It's nothing but pyramids and sand. I know. Gets everywhere. In the cracks. She's on a mission to protect a tomb from men who want to invade it. Furthermore, she's on this mission because her father told her to protect the tomb's secret from the men. The world will be in great danger. Devious, dangerous men who seek the triangle's awesome and terrible powers. This you must prevent at all costs. And then we get this scene in the cave-like tomb itself, which is also pretty telling. And then if you had any doubts that this was symbolic, there's this genius line. The log must pierce the urn. And then, of course, this happens. If this scene isn't a ham-fisted metaphor for sexual awakening, then what is? After the log and urn scene, Lara seems to become more in touch with her sexuality. She starts developing a very understated romantic rapport with Daniel Craig's character, Alex West. Near the end of the movie, she saves his life, but there's still next to no explicit romance. They never even kiss, unless you count the sexy CPR Lara performs. So keeping Lara relatively chaste is an invitation of sorts to male viewers. It makes it easy for the audience to imagine themselves filling that empty place and being her partner. All right. Let's go. The second movie, Lara Croft Tomb Raider Cradle of Life, performed poorly, earning 157 million compared to the first film's 275 million. The film was actually received more positively by critics who cited better character development for Lara. But as we've seen, character development wasn't necessarily what audiences wanted from Lara. The first Tomb Raider leaves off when Lara has gone through the symbolic sexual awakening and discovered her femininity. She even wears a dress. Oh my god. She bosses all the men in the movie around and seems more aware of her sexual attractiveness. We even see her ex-boyfriend, which might have disappointed all of Lara's would-be boyfriends in the audience. So giving Lara even this small amount of sexual agency and character development evidently ruined the fantasy and negatively affected the film's success. So it's pretty clear that Lara in the original movie and game was an ultimate male fantasy. But despite that, she should still be considered an important character in the feminist canon. It's hard to see her like that now, but in the 90s and early 2000s, Lara was a step in the right direction for action movies. 
She was a very popular female hero in two huge male-dominated industries. And we should even give Angelina Jolie props because as much as the movie seems ridiculously sexualized to us today, the actress actually fought against replicating video game Lara's unrealistic proportions because she didn't want to set this kind of ideal for young girls. In 2013, the 10th Tomb Raider game rebooted Lara's character as a more realistic, three-dimensional, relatable character, fit for our times. A famous explorer once said that the extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. And in the 2018 Tomb Raider movie, Alicia Vikander has the same mysterious, vaguely foreign allure that Jolie had, but her appearance is less overtly sexual and a little more realistic. The setup is pretty similar. Lara is still the rough and tumble explorer. It'll be an adventure. Death is not an adventure. And her story doesn't hinge on a romantic plot. So in that sense, the movie is still appealing to those audience members who kind of prefer it when she's single. But in the context of 2018, not emphasizing romance is generally viewed as positive. Lara's also still obsessed with her father. I thought I saw dad again. I think I'm going mad. Lara, your father's gone. But there's a key difference in the new version. Now she's set on getting answers about her dad, the whole film is set up to be a backstory for Croft. And as we saw, the previous lack of a backstory was intentionally depriving her of agency and a fully formed adult persona. So the fact that we're getting an origin story is in itself the writing of a major wrong in the character's history. And it was important to us that Lara felt like a real girl, uh, a real human being. So over the last 22 years and throughout all of her iterations, what does Lara Croft represent for our culture? Jolie's Croft was obviously a sex object for all of the reasons we've discussed, but she was still a trailblazer, if only because she was both a female and a strong action hero. She was even kind of a feminist Trojan horse. She masqueraded as pure male fantasy, but the success of her female-led story opened the door for others who came after her. I'm just not that kind of Croft. I'm Deborah. I'm Susanna, and we're the creators of Screen Prism. If you like our videos, please subscribe down there.